In a previous video, we looked at building the Fluent2 Toast component inside of Power Apps. This enabled us to send custom Toast notifications to users of our app. In this video, we're going to expand on this idea of custom Toast notifications by creating a second component to display all of our previous Toast notifications. If you haven't seen the previous video on the Fluent2 Toast component, be sure to click the link in the top right corner of the video. Let's take a look. Channel members have access to download the apps used in the videos, as well as the YAML code used in the components that I showcase. You can click the join button below the video if you're interested in supporting the channel. We'll start by looking at where we left off in our Toast component video. That component is designed to be its own standalone component, but we can make some simple modifications to it in order to enable a notification center like experience. The way our Toast component works currently is that it removes notifications from a collection when the notifications either expire, the user dismisses them, or when there's more than four notifications in the collection. To have a notification center, we need to store these Toast notifications instead of removing them from the collection. We'll instead toggle their visibility. So that's what we'll be changing first in our Toast component. Now the first place we'll go in our component is to the add toast custom property. We can see the behavior of this custom property is to remove the oldest toast notification from our collection of toasts if the number of toast notifications displayed is equal to four. Now instead of outright removing the record, we're going to change this so that it's just hiding the record instead. We'll first go to the toast record custom parameter as part of our add toast custom property. And here we'll see the schema of the record that's passed in to our add toast custom property. At the bottom, we'll add a new field for toast visible, and we'll set this value to true. Now our component is going to give us an error when we add this, and that error is caused because our send toast custom property now has the incorrect schema passed into the add toast custom property. So we'll go to our send toast custom property and we'll also add the same toast visible field here. Now when our app sends a toast to the add toast custom property, the toast visible field will always be set to true. At this point, we've updated our send toast property and we've also updated our custom parameter as part of our add toast property. So now we can change our code that removes the toast notification from the collection to instead hide it. I'll format our formula and we'll comment out this remove formula. Now in its place, we'll insert a patch function and we'll patch our collection of toast notifications with the record being our first record in our toast table custom property. The value that we want to patch in this case is the toast visible field being set to false. So now instead of removing this record from the collection, we're just simply setting the toast visible field to false if there are four toast notifications in the collection. Once this part of the formula runs, then it will collect the new toast record. That takes care of our add toast property, but we also have a remove toast property. So we'll select that and we can see we have the same code to remove a record from our toast collection. Instead of this remove function, we'll again insert a patch function. We'll patch our collection of toasts. And the record that we want to patch is the toast record custom parameter. The value for this will be setting the toast visible property to false. So again, our two scenarios are when a new toast gets added and there are already four toasts displayed, the component will set the oldest toast notifications toast visible field to false. Likewise, if the user clicks the dismiss button or the timer runs out inside of the individual toast notification, that notification's toast visible field will also be set to false. Now, the next thing we have to do is go to our toast table custom property. Currently, this is just pointed to our collection of toasts, but instead we want to filter this collection so that it's only showing values with toast visible set to true. We'll add a filter function, for our logical test, we'll enter toast visible. The purpose of these modifications is to keep our toast component still only displaying a maximum of four toast notifications. 
We do, however, want to keep a record of the toast notifications so that we can display them in our notification center. Because of this, we don't want to remove them entirely from the collection. So this way we're instead setting a visibility field to false in order to hide them inside of the toast component. Now after our toast table property is filtered to only show the visible toast notifications, we need to go back to our add toast custom property and instead of counting the rows in our collection of toasts, we instead need to count the rows in our toast table custom property. If the number of visible notifications is equal to four, then the patch function will run. Let's go back to our app and we'll just make sure everything is running properly still. We'll select a couple notifications here and we can see that the oldest notification gets removed. Now we're still only showing four notifications on screen, but our collection of toasts has more than four notifications. We can insert a table temporarily to see this. For the items property of this table, we'll point to cold toasts. And we'll just go ahead and add a couple fields here. You can see a list of toast notifications and we can see that the toast visible column is set to no for all of these except the most recent four. If we select our button here to send a new toast notification, we can see that the oldest visible toast is now invisible. I didn't design the original component in this way because some may not want all of those toast notifications stored in a collection. These simple changes, however, allow you to store those notifications and now we can use this to display a notification center. We'll go back to our components and we'll duplicate our Fluent2 Toast component. We'll rename this new component to Notification Center. Now this new component should only be used for viewing the past notifications. So we don't need all the custom properties and complexity that the original Toast component had. We can delete our Remove Toast property, our Add Toast property, as well as our Send Toast property. Now we have a couple errors inside of the component and that's for the timer and the dismiss button and neither of these are needed. Now that we've removed our timer, we also receive an error for the progress bar, which we can delete. We'll go to our toast table custom property and in this case, we don't want to filter only by the visible toasts, we want to see all of the notifications. So we'll remove that filter function. In our toast component container, we'll go ahead and insert a text control and call this text notifications. We'll go ahead and move that to the top of our toast component container and we'll do some formatting. We'll set this control to stretch with a minimum width of zero and we'll set the vertical alignment to middle. We'll give the text control a left padding of eight and we'll also set the font size to 16 with a font weight of semi-bold. For the text of this, we'll simply call it notifications, and you'll see it's pushing down our gallery now outside of our component. So we'll have to go to our toast component container, and we'll go to the height property. To the height of the gallery, we'll also add the gallery's Y property, and you can see that fixes the height issue inside of our component. This is a very rudimentary notification system, but I hope it gives you a good technical example to design your own. Our Fluent2 Toast component is doing all the work for adding and removing notifications. This component, on the other hand, is simply displaying records from that collection. We'll go back to the screen and we'll insert our notification center. It looks like it reset the height property to a static value, so we'll go ahead and change that to self.autoheight, and we can see it displays our full list of Toast notifications. Now I'll show you an example of how you can style this and use it in the real world. We'll go ahead and insert a new screen. Typically in web apps, we have some sort of bell icon to show a notification center. The user would click on the bell icon and that would display the list of notifications. We'll head over to a website called powericons.dev. This is a website created by Dennis Dorflinger that allows you to easily copy and paste various icons into Power Apps. Dennis recently updated the site to include Fluent2 icons, so we can come here to easily search for a bell icon. In this case, we'll search for alert, 
and we can simply click on the image to copy it to our clipboard. That has copied the SVG code needed to directly paste that image into Power Apps. So we'll right click on our container and we'll select Paste. And now you can see our image appears. We'll go ahead and reduce the size a little bit and we'll center it in our container. With our icon in our Power App now, we'll go to the Advanced tab and go to the On Select property of the icon. Here we want to update a context variable called CTX Show Notifications. We want to set this value to true when the icon is clicked. What we're going to build is a surface for our notification center to appear on. This will be an overlay on the screen that's only visible when the user clicks the notification icon. On our screen, we'll insert a container. And for this container, we'll set the X and Y values to zero. For the width, we'll set this to parent.width. And for the height, we'll set this to parent.height. We'll also remove the drop shadow. Now in this container, we're going to insert two things. The first being an image control and the second being a vertical container. For the image control, we'll remove the sample image from the image property, and this will make the image transparent. We'll set the X and Y values to zero. We'll set the width to parent.width, and we'll set the height to parent.height. For our vertical container, We'll position this wherever we want the notification center to show up. In this case, let's say we want our header container to have the notification icon all the way on the right hand side. So we'll write justify all of the contents of the container. We'll also add a right padding of eight to that container. Back to our vertical container, we'll set the X value of this so that the container is aligned with our notification icon on the right hand side. So in this case, we'll do parent.width minus self.width minus green container two dot padding right. We also want this to be vertically aligned right below the notification icon. So we'll set the Y property of this to header container two dot Y plus header container two dot height plus eight for some extra padding. We'll shrink the width of this container down to 350 and we'll change the height to 400. We'll give this container a white background, and we'll also set the drop shadow to extra bold. Now this container, container number three, is the floating window where our notification center will be shown. So we'll go ahead and insert the notification center component into this container. We'll set our component's alignment to stretch with a minimum width of zero. On the parent container settings, We'll also change the vertical overflow to scroll because our notification center is dynamically adjusting its height based on the number of notifications in it. The scrolling is being handled by its parent container. You can see the sort order of the notification center is still set to ascending, and I would probably recommend setting that to descending. And that way the most recent notifications are at the top. Now that our notification pop-up is in place, We'll go to our image that's behind our container, and in the onSelect property of this image, we'll set our context variable for CTX show notifications to false. When the user clicks anywhere else but in the notification center, then the notifications should be hidden. Finally, we'll go to our regular container, and we'll set the visible property to our show notifications variable. Let's try it out. We'll click our image, we can see our notifications appear, which we can then scroll through. If we select outside of the notification center, we can see that the notifications disappear. We'll do one final trick with our notification icon, and that is to change the tab index to zero. By doing this, we can indicate to the user that this is a clickable image. Setting the tab index to zero changes the cursor to a hand when the user hovers over the image. You can see we get a border on the image when we click on it, and we can change that by setting the border property to none. And that's about it. I hope this video gave you some inspiration on how to build your own notification center using the Fluent2 Toast component. With a couple simple modifications, you can track the history of your Toast notifications and display them in something like this notification center. If you have any questions about this component, please leave them in the comments below. And if you're interested in seeing more videos like this, be sure you get subscribed to the channel.
I hope you enjoyed the video and have a great day.